What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Bruce. So I'm going to review the fourth album by rapper Jim Jones. Basically, this project is called Pray for Rain, and it came out in the spring of 2009. So the thing about this particular, so the thing about this particular project is just the fact that this is after Jim Jones hit 2000. This project was a couple years after Jim Jones hit 2006 album, his third album, Hustlers P O M E, from basically late 2006 at the hit single We Fly High on there. So Jim Jones hit a particular high in that particular pitch at late 2006 throughout 2007 and 2008. He dropped a number of projects 2007, 2008. He broke kind of back into the spotlight with albums like Harlem's American Gangster and then the Bird Gang album, MOB, the album from the summer of 2008, some pitches like that. He did some stuff with Bird Gang throughout 2007. I'm going to get to that stuff down the road as far as that pitch goes. But the stuff is some Harold stuff here because this is Jim Jones after like some of the detours that he took between like bird gang and harlem's american gangster and stuff like that i'd say it's a, it's a pretty solid concept kind of get but this is his true follow-up to hustlers pome and it's a pretty hit album this is definitely one of jim jones's best i'd have to say but then jim jones was just overall on a pretty good high and this really it was really cresting throughout the late 2000s i'd have to say in particular just some excellent stuff this is an album that i remember and definitely pretty pitch type one to kind of get here some great stuff to get out of the late 2000s i would definitely have to say it's pretty underappreciated especially nowadays i look after the views or the hits of this particular album got from spotify and it's really kind of minimal i'd have to say in particular it's just not one that's really that popular but for the most part spotify did for the most part jim jones didn't translate that well to spotify i'd have to say he was kind of there in the mixtape type days but he kind of dried up after this particular album i'd have to say really the thing about jim jones for the most part is on most of his albums he would get one hit single but he always flubbed with like the second single or anything beyond that that's what happened with hustlers pome when he dropped we Fly High, there was actually a second single that was called like Emotionless that had Joel Santana on there, but that single completely kind of flubbed. And with this particular album, the second single on this album did a little bit better, but not by much. It's kind of a song that critics hated, pitches like that. It's called like Nana Nana Nana. You know, like the little childish dish that kids do and pitches like that. It's just kind of a pitch behind it. It's a decent song, I'd have to say, but it's just kind of a clumsy execution of like the chorus, I'd have to suppose. That's kind of the concept about it. But that one was kind of a flub after like a pretty solid second. Um, basically, the lead single off this particular project was a pretty solitary single here. It was Pop Champagne. Definitely a pretty hit song out of the fall of 2008. Pitches like that. Real good hit single. Jim Jones is pretty large in 2008, just between songs like Splash, that was a pretty nice one, and there was like one that Love Me No More, and some pitches like that from Harlem's American Gangster, some of those type ones, Bird Gang Money, some of those type ones, I'd have to say. That was some excellent type concepts. So Jim Jones pretty much was rocking 2008, and he crested a little bit into 2009. This is, like I was saying, this is a very underappreciated album here, I would definitely, I suppose. Definitely has the hits on here, plenty of good lady songs, pitches like that, just some good stuff, some good summer date type music. Just some good summer activity, date afternoon type music. Just some good day commerce and day afternoons. Just pitches like that. That's the same particular. Just some excellent type stuff to kind of get here. It's kind of the concept. There's some pop off type songs like the song pop off pitches like that. There's some good homies type music. Some city hopping. A little bit of leftover hits from like the city flash of like maybe not quite as glissy and flashy as like Hustlers P.O.M.E. But it definitely has some of those songs on here like My 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 and some of those type ones. I'd have to say there's some, like maybe one or two other ones. But this one's a little bit less city oriented. This one is kind of east coast but this has a lot more gloss towards it and less city lights flashes less of like a cruising around kind of more in the wind type album and more of just of like appreciating the sights of just like day commerce and pitches like that there is some nightlife on here but it's just not as much as like the day commerce i'd have to say in particular but it's just a good concept kind of get some of this just more day activity shopping type music pitches like that just afternoons and just atmospheres of just like the standard commerce of just air and running and pitches like that but it's just kind of it balances it in some senses but i would say it's probably maybe 35% night commerce and pitches like that, maybe like 65% more like day commerce and just afternoons and shopping music, just air and running pitches like that, I'd have to say, so it's kind of a concept. But yeah, basically we'll talk about the singles on here. There were four of them, but the con the concept about it was that some of these were just kind of promotional singles that didn't really chart that well as far as that particular kind of went. Jim Jones was kind of starting to become more of like a household name after his hit album We Fly or after his hit album Hustlers P.O.M.E. as far as that pitch kind of went. But the thing about it was, is like I was saying, Jim Jones really only got one or just one or one and a half hits off of each of his projects. So he was a big rapper, but it was just kind of the concept that he just was not able to become like a multi-hit he was just not able to become like a multi-hit album type artist like folks like T.I. and Ludacris and 
you know, even Cameron in some cases and people like that, Rick Ross, some of those type people, Nelly, some of those type folks. It's just kind of the concept. He was just kind of, he was a burgeoning rapper, but he just didn't quite manage to flesh it out. And this is an album that attempted it, but like I was saying, that Nana and Nana song just kind of didn't do it quite as well. And then the other two promotional singles are just kind of here and there, but all of the singles I recommend. It's just a good concept for that. So the first single is Pop Champagne that says Ron Browse and Pop Champagne has Ron Browse and Joel Santana on there. It's a pretty good pitch. Ron Browse is the cat with the auto tune on here and he does a pretty excellent job. He's pretty pseudo similar to T Pain pitches like that. He actually nails this particular verse quite well. Just an excellent excellent type one that's very underappreciated. So this is like a vintage and kind of underappreciated Jim Jones hit I'd had to say in particular. It just kind of came out of the fall of two thousand eight. It's a real nice one. This, this is like the song has some crisp kind of nightclub appeal i'd have to say in particular and this is just like some nostalgic kind of fall music i'd have to say definitely nostalgic kind of autumn music this is an excellent type pitch to kind of listen to a great song to listen to october november i mean this can kind of be a summer type song just because the overall exuberant and lush kind of energy of this particular one is real thumping and kind of just spacious type one for just the atmosphere behind her just real crowded type one i'd have to say it's just kind of the concept about it but i look after it it just really reminds me of something you're really listening to around halloween and thanksgiving pitches like that some of those type of times late september to about the first couple weeks of december i'd have to say just some good concepts kind of get there it's real good autumn type song to get back in the fall of 2008 real nostalgic type song i'd have to say real nice one classic kind of hit jim jones kind of hit but it's just kind of the concept it's just it it performed well but it's just kind of a forgotten about one just because i feel like jim jones especially in these times is kind of an afterthought for the most part just because he was kind of a one-hit wonder per album just with how that kind of went so it's just kind of one I feel like definitely We High Flies, I definitely feel like We Fly High is one that's talked about quite a bit, but in terms of some of these other ones, this is probably one of the ones that just isn't talked about as much, but it's a nice one. Nana and Nana is the second single. This is another highlighted one, but this one really flubbed in terms of the charts, and it makes sense just because it's somewhat of a goofy type song, or at least relatively silly, I had to say, but it's just a good concept. It's just a real taunting type song, but I do like it. This song has a decent bounce and jazzy kind of electro venue. It's kind of a jazzy electro venue hit, I'd have to say in particular. This is kind of an offhanded chorus and casual appeal this song particularly has, but it's just a casual appeal this song particularly kind of has, but it's pretty stellar, I'd have to say. So it's just a concept. If you can get past the chorus and pitches like that and just the overall awkward kind of song title, I'd say this is a pretty nice one. Pretty good pitch to kind of get in particular. This works with some pretty good bounce. It's a good, decent venue type hit to kind of get some club bounce to kind of get here. Was this kind of the concept? This is kind of somewhat clumsy in the execution behind it, I'd say. But it is a stellar song. So it's kind of concept. I mean, if you're just if you hear this song on a playlist, you know, if, if folks are like, well, what's this song? You say, oh, it's Nana and Nana. If people, if you're if you're in a whip or something like that, and you're like, well, what's this song? And you say, oh, this is a nice Jim Jones song. You just it would say. Oh yeah, this is that hit song "Nana Na Na Na" by Jim Jones. This is kind of, it just doesn't have that same appeal, but it is one if you're just listening to a playlist and you don't really ask and want to full blown know what for these some of these particular type tunes would be. It's just a good one to kind of play, but in terms of like gab and gossip, it just doesn't hit quite as heavily. I'd have to say it's just kind of the concept, but it is. It's got some appeal about it. Precious is the third single. It says Ryan Leslie on there, which is a pretty good pitch. Definitely like this one. It's like a bustling kind of light rap rock, ladies' flash of a song. I'd have to say in particular, it's like some good date night and overall social commotion fun. I'd have to say about this one. This is just a real spicy makeshift kind of song. This one's just pretty overall nice type tune. This is some good day commerce, like I was saying. This good concept. It's a real spicy. Th I guess it would be more date evening. This is a pitch just like that. It's kind of the atmosphere, just restaurant type music, some of those type fairs, as far as that particular kind of goes. And there's some good shopping mall type music, something, you know, maybe in the right day you'd hear it at a place like. You'd hear it at a place like Macy's, some of those type places. Places like Macy's, Bath and Body Works, some of those type places in particular, as far as that particular day commerce kind of goes along with it. Just a real nice one. Just real like the appeal of this particular one. Just some good ladies flash I'd say this is kind of a good nightclub type song, but it also works for, like I was saying, some good restaurant type music and just overall commotion, just outing type fare, just good stuff to kind of be out and about with. I'd say real nice one. And then surprisingly, Frenemies was the fourth single. Now, this one kind of feels like a different one to kind of pick for a single. I probably would have went with something like Medicine or This Is The Life or maybe even possibly How To Be A Boss in certain cases, Blow The Bank or This Is For My Bitches would have been a nice one or even Girlfriend. But this is kind of, this is one that probably needed to happen just in terms of like some differential kind of song appeal, I'd have to say. It's a differential type topic, 
to kind of get. And this is kind of a grizzle kind of city day commerce of a song that had the same particular. It's like a real talk song, I would definitely say. And this is like some solid traverse thoughts. I would definitely feel like and this is just like a hustler's kind of makeshift hit, I'd have to say. So this one, this one's kind of about Dipset and folks like that. Maybe like Freaky Zeke and Cameron, some of those type of folks, folks he kind of had it falling out with. Because around this time, particularly Cameron was not, if you'll notice that Cameron was not particularly on this album, despite the fact that they were both a part of Dipset. You know, by this point, Jim Jones had kind of separated more from Di uh, Jim Jones had kind of separated more from Dipset. He, Cameron was at least on Hustler's POME, but he wasn't on like the Bird Gang album and he wasn't on Harlem's American Gangster, some of those type pitches. As Jim Jones started to blow up in late 2006, 2008, Cameron was starting to fade away in pitches like that. I mean, he was still kind of around, but Jim Jones kind of in some cases became more popular around this time. It was this kind of concept. They just had some bickering internally in pitches like that. Some folks say that the beef was kind of something that was just materialized to kind of get them both some press and pitches like that. But for the most part, it was just kind of the concept. For the most part, nowadays, they don't even really collaborate on songs, even today, as far as that kind of goes. So it's just kind of the concept. They just seemingly never reconcile that sort of pitch. But Joel Santana's least on here a couple of times, which is a good pitch, just to kind of get. He was also on the Bird Gang album, just stuff like that. I'd have to say it was just kind of concept of talking about it. Good stuff there. So that's the single. So basically, out of 12, out of 16 songs on this particular album, I wound up recommending to you 12. So it's an excellent type pitch to kind of get here. Basically, the four songs I don't recommend on here would be Intro, Pulling Me Back, Let It Out, and Rain. Talk about some of these real quick. Basically, the first three songs you hear on this particular album are just some four type productions on here. I feel like Pulling Me Back was almost one I recommended. That one's kind of like almost like a ghoulish type one that just feels like a kind of spooky kind of boom bap type production on there. Not necessarily boom bap in terms of like 80s type fare, but just something that has a lot of bass and thump about it. Pretty similar to My My My, just a little bit more ghoulish type one, more haunting, but it's just a concept. I just couldn't get into that one enough as far as that kind of went. And plus on Spotify, there's a couple songs that you just can't listen to on Spotify for some strange reason. And on YouTube, it's kind of the same pitch. Like some of these playlists, like Jim Jones just deleted these songs, or at least doesn't have them available. Pulling Me Back is one of them, and Medicine's the other. Not really sure why those songs are harder to get a hold of as far as that particular kind of goes. But it's just kind of concept. You have to kind of search around a bit to get those two particular songs, which is unfortunate because Medicine's a really dope song. And I'd say I really appreciate this one. It's a real nice one. Do recommend it so if you buy the cd i'd have to say to go fuck with that particular song because it's a nice one pulling me back is kind of one eh, somewhat on the fence about it but i do like the get up of the particular song and the atmosphere behind this within a relative fish which is kind of more not quite enough to be on the fence about but it is one with the within some degree of note didn't i mean intro is not really much of a song just because that's kind of the concept about it this is more talking and just get ups like that i'd have to say this kind of the concept let it out was just kind of a poor production didn't really appreciate that one it's a real kind of poor kind of it's a real kind of awkward and poor guitar type song that just didn't work there were just kind of some poor and awkward type guitar licks on that particular song that just didn't work out that well i'd have to say it was just the production on that one was just not that affable at all i'd have to say same thing with Rain, that was just kind of one that was just another one that just didn't work as well as probably what it needed to. It was just kind of a more introspective type one. There's some ones on here that kind of did that. My, my, my pulled it off better, and I'd say pulling me back probably pulled it off better than Rain. Just kind of an unfortunate aspect just because, just because Rel is on that particular song, and he was kind of a part of Dipset, so he probably should have been on a better song to have kind of gotten that one, but it just didn't turn out that well. That's just kind of the concept. So intro, I mean, I kind of feel like intro is not really a song, so just be able to say that there's 12 out of 15 songs to recommend. That's kind of here and there, just being able to say it almost damn near so I could give this album like a 10 out of 10. I think it's going to get like a 9.25 out of 10, but then I kind of feel like if intro is not really a song, I just would have to say it'd be more 15 songs. So just being able to say maybe it could be like a 9.5 out of 10. I'd probably say if there if, if you want to count intros like a song, it's like the 16th song, I'd say it'd be a 9.25 out of 10 that I give this album. If you don't want to count that, I'd probably say it'd be like a 9.5 out of 10 just because of the concept of it. I, I realize that mo for the most part, when I only dislike three songs out of a vast majority of songs on an album, I usually wind up giving it a 10 out of 10, but I just kind of look after it. It's between some of the concepts, like some of the songs being slashed and pitches like that, if they're still able, if they're still available to kind of get in pitches like that, if you can buy it on like iTunes or Amazon, some of those type pitches, iTunes or Amazon, some of those type pitches anymore, as far as that kind of goes, or just if the CD is harder to find, I just would have to say there's some concepts like that. It should definitely be on Spotify. And then just between like songs like Rain and Let It Out and some degree of pulling me back kind of being that way. But I think a nine and a half is still pretty damn good, I'd have to say. But we'll talk about some of these songs here. So How to Be a Boss, the real nice one. This says NOE, who sounds very similar to Jay-Z and then Ludacris on this particular song. It's definitely a pretty good pitch to get Ludacris just because he wasn't dropping a ton of verses in 2009. So it's a nice one. 
This is like a screeching kind of city lights, but as of the song I had to say, it's like some good evening outing fun. I would definitely have to say in particular, and this is like a contemporary kind of 2000s East Coast type hit, I'd have to say. Definitely some pretty excellent type stuff. This, this is kind of a boppish type one. This is a great nightclub type song to kind of get here. Some city lights, but as it's definitely one that probably could have been on Hustlers POME in certain cases, I'd have to say in particular. There's some good concepts. There's some real nice East Coast kind of pizzazz that works pretty well. Probably need another song like this, I'd say. This one, between How to Be a Boss and Pop Off, these are some ones that just have that real good appeal. Just like some of that after effect of just more homey type music and pitches like that. But speaking of pop off, this is a real nice one. It's like a rowdy kind of triumphant outing bravado of a song I'd have to say in particular. It's like a good. This is some good homies music I'd have to say for like pounding hangout nights I'd have to say in particular. And this is definitely a good one to smoke a few, kind of get crunks and pitches like that. Just kind of kick back. Great track to smoke a few, watch some football pitches like that. PlayStation type music, some of those type pitches as far as that particular kind of goes. Get some snackage, I'd have to say. Real nice one. And the other tough to find song, Medicine, is a real nice one. This is like an oozing kind of hypnotic slow dance hit I'd have to say in particular. This has got some good club appeal I would definitely have to say. And this is like a potential single. This definitely probably could have been a charting song if it had been and marketed correctly i'd have to say this is just an excellent vibe and this is definitely a standout on here so it's definitely you probably do want to get the cd rendition of this particular song find it on ebay or amazon some pictures like that because it's just an excellent concept to kind of get this one appreciate this particular song it's a real good highlight i'm surprised that jim jones didn't want this song available because it's just an overall nice one it's really i would definitely recommend trying to track this song down this is the live is a real highlight one. This is another nice sparkling type one. This is like a sparkling kind of day commerce jive of a song I'd have to say in particular. It's like some regular afternoon kind of commotion I'd have to say. And this is just some good shopping music and daytime date type fare I'd have to say. A real good concept for that. There's definitely some daytime date type fare on this particular album I'd have to say. This is the live precious in some cases. I'd probably say Blow the Bank and This Is From My Bitches are all some good ones for that relative commerce. Just some real nice kind of afternoon shopping type music and just, and just good afternoon commerce with Bay and Boo and pitches like that as far as that particular kind of goes. So some good stuff for that. Blow the Bank is another nice one. This is a pretty glitzy type song I'd have to say in particular. It's like a good hit pairing with like This Is The Life like I was saying before. Real nice one. This has a glossy hook and overall plush shopping music I'd have to say pretty good concept about. And this is just an overall ladies hit. So this is just some good fare. Definitely some good songs for ladies. There's plenty of songs on this particular album for ladies that I'd say this is a real good concept. Kind of similar to Twista and folks like that. Too short, obviously, some of those type folks. Trying to think of a few more cats that do some good songs for ladies. Trying to think. I mean, Tupac is pretty good at songs like that as well. Tupac, Too Short, Twista, some of those type folks. Um, ludicrous in certain senses, I'd have to say. Just some good concepts just within that relative pitch. Just a lot of good appeals for that. Another good song for that relative concept is This Is For My Bitches. Obviously, with this song being for your... Obviously, with this song being called This Is For My Bitches For The Ladies, I'd have to say. But this is like a good day commerce, I'd have to say. A boppish kind of bay tune, I'd have to say. Pretty good concept for that. It's like a glossy kind of sunny day. It's like a glossy kind of sunny day afternoon activity song, I'd have to say. And it's just an overall pretty nice song. So it definitely has some appeal about it. Just with that, suppose in particular, just some good date afternoon type pitches. Just some good afternoon, just overall, just overall sunny day. And just Aaron type music, just to really have in particular, just some good, just standard commerce i'd have to say there's some good stuff for that girlfriends are pretty nice one this is an underappreciated song this has joel santana on there's pretty good pitch to get this one it's like a feisty kind of nightclub dance hit i'd have to say in particular real good bounce and pairs well with pop champagne i'd have to say and this is just good for like a night on the town this one's a little bit more tribal like the pitch behind it, a little bit feisty and ferocious kind of pop champagne was kind of like a tribal one almost in certain pitches i'd have to say these are just two girlfriend and pop champagne are two exotic type ones to kind of get on here just for like a tribal type sense a little bit more ferocious animalistic type tones as far as i particular kind of goes but there's some nice ones i would definitely have to suppose real nice stuff to kind of get here drill santana really shreds his verses and pitches like that and i would have to say this overall has some good vibes about it my 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 is a pretty nice one i think i talked about this one i'm not really sure if i did but i'll talk about it again just to get to this one it's like a murky and kind of gloomy city night creeping of a song i'd have to say in particular it's like some good ruminating this is a good ruminating hit i'd have to say definitely this song has character, I would have to suppose, and this is just a get some errands done type song, I'd have to say. So this one, this one's kind of about Jim Jones' fallen friends, stack bundles, I'd have to say. I didn't realize that he was deceased, but he was the cat that was on, he was the cat that was on a Dipset X mess a bunch. I reviewed that album back in December, I'd have to say. Definitely a pretty good album, I'd have to say. It's a Christmas album by Jim Jones, some of those type pitches. That's the one that's really underappreciated by Jim Jones also, I'd have to say. I do recommend that one. Stack bundles was on that project. He was also on a little bit of Hustlers P.O.M.E. as far as that pitch kind of went, so those are some cons but he passed in between 
those albums and this particular album from 2009 that hit Jim Jones pretty hard. So it's a good pitch to kind of get this particular song. A real gloomy type one, but I do like the murky type of appeal of this particular song. If I had to say some of these city, some of these city hopping type ones would be My My My, Friend of Me's, and How to Be a Boss. I'd have to say in particular, just some real nice ones to kind of get within that relative pitch. So some dope stuff. Yeah, like I was saying, a lot of this is kind of day commerce, just pitches like that. Some of these, I do feel like murky. I do feel like My 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 is a little bit more night creeping, I'd have to say. But a lot of these, just like some of the, well, most of these ladies type songs are more in like shopping type commerce during the daytime, I'd say. But yeah, it's basically 65% day and I'd say 35% night just within that relative pitch. Maybe a little bit here and there more. But there are some nightclub songs like Pop Champagne, Na 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 Na, How to Be a Boss, Pop Off, some of those type ones. Just being able to say there's just some good gems on here. Just kind of the concept. Maybe, yeah, it's just some good pitches. It has a good balance of day life and night life, I'd have to say. It's just a good concept just to kind of get some of these out and just within the relative pitch of that, I suppose. That's kind of the concept. But yeah. Nine and a half score out of ten, I'd have to say, just slashing the fact that intro is not really a song I'd have to say in particular. The social score, I'm going to go ahead and give the social score like a ten out of ten because I really like the appeal of this particular album. It just has a lot of good boppers type of appeal. The only reason why I wouldn't give it is maybe I'll give the social score like a 9.75 out of ten because it has a lot of appeal about it, but it's just kind of the fact that some of these songs are just kind of underappreciated and didn't really chart that well just as far as that kind of went. Jim Jones is always kind of seen as like a one-hit wonder or at least a one-hit Per, or at least a one hit per album wonder as far as that kind of goes along with it so it's just the fact that most of these singles kind of flubbed apart from pop champagne and even pop champagne is kind of an underappreciated type song i'd have to say just kind of because i feel like that quality i feel like the quality of this particular album is definitely kind of there i'd have to say it's just kind of constant that some of these are just kind of underperforming or just i'd say i mean Ludacris is on here joel santana's on here a couple of times noe is a really good lyricist pitches like that some good lady songs on here that oh she does a pretty good r b singer so it's just a lot of good pitches as far as that particular kind of goes ron browse is on here just some good pitches like that that's a lot of good appeals it's kind of the concept as to whether or not folks are going to give jim jones the world as far as that particular kind of goes because jim jones may not be a sheer full-blown kind of lyricist but he does have some good songs he's definitely one of those ones especially as ringtone rap started to die down in like 2009 late 2008 2009 so it's a good pitch to kind of get some of these just to get some of these particular type songs but i would give it a perfect score but i'll give it a 9.75 just because the fact that some of the appeal might be slighted just because folks don't normally give jim jones a world as far as that particular kind of goes but that's the concept so in terms of future like jim jones put out an album in late 2023 i want to say it was like a sequel to the bird gang album something like that he dropped like a bird gang mlb the album too something like that he's dropped a number of projects jim jones has plenty of projects that had the same particular he's got plenty of mixtapes plenty of albums and pitches like that there's definitely some more i want to get to there's definitely there's like a mixtape i'm going to get to definitely some mixtapes i want to get to just pitches like that that's going to happen down the road there's definitely more jim jones to kind of get to as far as that kind of goes this is damn near a classic just for that to say the impact of this even if it's kind of underappreciated i look after it and even if he slashed a few songs i still would have to say i just would have to say for the most part this is incre this is inescapably excellent i just would have to say despite the fact that it's kind of underappreciated i still would have to say to give this project a whirl and just fuck with it just because there's definitely some good hits about this particular project definitely some good day commerce some good date afternoon type fair some good date afternoon type fair and some good night commerce just has a lot of good gloss and so overall peel about some good hooks on here some great productions just stuff like that some great guests some of those type pitches just an overall just compelling and thrilling album that just does a lot right ahead so it's definitely some easy stuff to kind of fuck with here